Hello, welcome, <laughs> welcome to Fiber Town. Dude, stop it. Hello, and welcome to Fiber Town. Shh, stay. I did not say the S P E A. No, oh, no, can't do it yet. Sorry, um, I have half a mind to start over. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah, maybe. Nah. Hi, I'm Emily, Chain of Fools on Ravelry. Sit down. Fiber Town with an R E on the blog. And uh, on Instagram, sit, uh, shake. This is Alice. Yeah, she's been bugging me. Um, it's almost five o'clock at night, and we had a nap. We had one of those summertime naps. And so since it's almost five o'clock, here I am having a little drinky poo. And yes, there you go. There's your other one. <laughs> See that little snout? All right. And you can either stay there, but you have to be nice. Or you can go outside. Okay. I'm on my porch, and I wanted to say thank you for joining me. Uh, the last time I was on my porch, I realized I was too far away from the microphone, and the sound quality was not spectacular. I do apologize. Um, so I've made an effort to be close up and personal this time. And I'm just noticing the bags under my eyes. <laughs> so I need to be a little farther away for my own sanity. Uh, no, but hello! So glad you're here. Um, let's see, what's today? I don't even know the date. It's 2015, it's July, it's the 22nd, maybe? It's a Wednesday. Um, yes, I'd like to say hello to a few, quite a few new people who introduced themselves on the welcome thread. So we had we have SF Chick, who is Raina, I believe. She lives in Pennsylvania, and she's um, originally, I think she's originally from there, but she's moved back from California. Um, let's see, she mostly knits and sometimes uses those peg, I think, what are they called? The, um, knitting looms you can get in Michael's and Joanne's. Ooh, and she's just started knitting socks and she's on her fourth pair. Aw, oh, she has a podcast. It's Raining Crafts. I'll have to check that out. Um, have you guys been watching just a side tangent? Hi, Raina. <laughs> Thanks for saying hello. Uh, the Knitting Expat Podcast. Uh, with Mina. She is, she's fantastic, and um, I've really been enjoying her podcast on YouTube. She is a Brit living in Bahrain, and she's, I think, a pretty new knitter, but man, she's gone whole hog, and, uh, and loves it, and she's making project bags to sell as well. It's summer. All right, so now we have basically Benita. Basically Benita. Hi, Benita. She, oh, she's another podcaster. She hosts the Fiber Pusher podcast. And let's see, she knits, spins, weaves, dyes, processes fiber, sells fiber, teaches all of these, except the selling part. Um, once, she just loves to talk about fiber stuff. So I'll have to check these both out. Um, excellent. So thank you, Benita. I'm glad she said hi. Then we have Mima Goli. Oh, and she she has an Etsy store. I think she has Firefly Fiber Arts. She's in Thunder Bay, Ontario. How cool is that? That's a really cool place to live. Um, let's see. They live near Lake Superior. It's amazing. Um, she has a history of fiber arts with crochet, but she just started knitting about two and a half years ago. Um, mm, now she spins as well. Now she has two wheels and uh, a drum carter, and she's, I have looked at her Etsy shop. She's got really cool stuff. Um, I think like carded Rolugs and cool stuff. So Firefly Fiber Arts, check it out. Thank you guys. Thank you for saying hello. And let's get on with the show. Um, let's see. Life Full of Laugh asked me ages ago. Oh, look, you can see my computer reflected. Hello. That's very meta podcast, isn't it? Um, I'll have to sit like this. <laughs> Life Full of Laugh ages ago asked me to mention the fact that she has a new group on Facebook called, um, I think it's the Yarn and Minis group. Ugh, I'm botching it. I'm sorry. Um, I have meant to mention this for ages, but it's a Facebook group basically around swapping mini skeins um, and doing scrap blankets or scrap projects. And they, 
I mean, it's a brand new group, and she has, I mean, it's going gangbusters. I, I um, follow the group. Sorry, I'm, it's the first time I see myself wearing this. I've been following the group, and um, it's a really cool thing. If you're into that, you should definitely check it out. Um, let me know if you want the address. You might already know about it already because um, lots of podcasters have talked about it. So very cool. The Summer of S is just so much fun in that thread. Um, everybody's chatting, and I'm basically adding things to my queue all the time. New prizes are on their way. I wanted to show you guys the prize I am offering. This is from the Copper Corgi. This is the last skein, because um, I only needed four for my Hitofude. And this is the Jones Street Sport, which is the wool alpaca silk blend. It's divine. This is a full skein, so it's 350 yards of sport. So chalette, you could get a chalette out of this. You could do hat, hat and mitt, mittens, cowl. How cool would like a sock hat head, sock head hat be out of this? So yeah, gorgeous. So I'm offering this as well, and this will go in the prize thread as soon as I can remember to take a picture of it. So, um, oh yes, a giveaway today. Northbound knitting, you guys. Um, that has been a really fun thread for me to follow because it seems like almost everybody likes a different colorway from, from Lisa of Northbound Knitting. And her colorways are just out of this world stunning. So this is Metallurgy. Do you guys want to know who wins it? <laughs> uh, random number picked number 21, who is P. Latham. And you are the very lucky, lucky winner of this stuff. I may have cast on something out of my BFL silk in this colorway. So let me know when you see this and I will get it in the mail to you. Um, this is her Superwash Merino Fingering, 400 yards each. So I, I know some people have joined her clubs just from going over and seeing her stuff. Um, and it's so hard to pick a favorite colorway, but it's really interesting to see what you guys liked. Okay, uh, let's see. So today, is that everything? That's everything businessy. So other than that, I have FOs, whips, spinning, weaving, sewing, acquisitions, and that's it. So, works in progress. Um, I'm going to show my husband's work in progress first. This is in the, his Spanish rice bag that I made. I made a drawstring bag out of an 11-pound bag of rice that we finally worked through for paella. And he is knitting the present cowl. Don't know who made who designed that. I can look it up. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm just seeing how he hasn't knit a stitch. <laughs> this is out of Periwinkle Sheep, and he doesn't have the ball band anymore. But isn't that a pretty color? It's much more of a. It's not as purple as it's showing on the screen. It's a. It's a gray. And this is what he has so far. So he has been. Learning to purl, garter stitch in the round. Now he's doing stockinette. He's quite good. He's a good little knitter. And this Friday we are going, the two of us, to uh, a party at Fiber Space for Space Commanders. There's a giant sale happening this weekend, and Space Commanders get to go a day early and have apparently alcoholic popsicles. They're having a popsicle party. So, I will go and we will, we will go and check it out. I love that I've conned him into knitting. No, I, I can con him into going to knitting events. <laughs> there has been no conning involved. He is into it. Okay, so my work's in progress. Let's see, I have my sock, my July socks, ongoing. And they have experienced a bit of a drought. But recently I picked them back up. These are the Regia, Arnie, and Carlos. I'm on the second one. I hope you can't hear my dog like barfing over there. Oh, I 
jealous. Um, fun stuff. I'm doing a double gusset heel. Um, that's a basic sock with a double gusset by Christy T. Payne. And other than that, it's my usual sock recipe of 64 stitches on US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters. I have my carbons. I love them for socks. Although I think at this sale, I'm going to buy some Chowgu um, DPNs, the um, metallic ones. I tried my friends, my friend Danae's, who's Whimsical Meerkat, and those things are great. I want a pair for my scrap yarn blanket and then a sock pair. So here's my second one. I think this is summer night or fall night. Cannot remember the colorway. Do Yes, I do have the ball band. And the colorway was 03655. And I, I've got like 25 more rounds before I can do the toe. So these will be finished by the next time I podcast, for sure. Because I know the, I'm not sure when I will podcast next. The um, summer has thrown me off. Travel and recovering from travel has thrown me off my weekly schedule. And my daughter is coming out to swing. You probably will be able to, be able to see her swinging. All right, she's not going to go because she's embarrassed. Never mind. Um, child loves to swing. She just, I think she spends a couple of hours a day in the summer. It's like some sort of rhythm therapy. She listens to music while she does it. Anyway, um, there's another like 12 year old girl who lives across the way who swings constantly too. And she sings like Taylor Swift songs as she does it on top of her, of her lungs. At least my kid's quiet about it. That's cute though. Um, okay. <laughs> so my other work in progress, one of my other works in progress is a design project and very optimistic it's going to work out. I'm on my second version of it. So a lot of knitting time has gone to that. Um, and hopefully in a week or two or three, I'll be asking for testers for a fingering weight shawl. Um, so fingers crossed. Okay, then there is the sock yarn blanket. Now, I apologize, I do not know what I have already showed on this since the last time. I've not been super motivated um, this summer with this blanket, which is all right. I have a new square, a pink square going. This is from um, String Bean. I don't think it's hand spun but she sent it along. She did send along a lot of hand spun, gorgeous stuff. And her hand spun's so good that sometimes you can't tell it's hand spun. So let me just show you what I have marked since the last time, and my apologies if I've already showed you this particular square. Let me see. Um, okay, so there's this one, my lollipop marker. There is, oh, everything was down at the other end. Mm. I did a major craft room reorganization and rearranging of furniture and move the couch out of it we have we are one couch family now we got rid of our nasty oh hang on a sec I think I have unwittingly don't switch okay Woo. unwittingly pressed a button it was gonna switch okay I'm still recording it was going to switch to a different camera. I was saying that we got rid of our couch that has all of the stains and detritus from our son's toddlerhood. It's like a 12 year old couch and you know if you have young kids, the family room couch gets nasty, okay? So it's gone. Goodness. We took the couch out of the um, craft room, which isn't, doesn't get a ton of use, and we're, we're getting different slip covers for it. It's an Ikea, Ikea couch, and hopefully it will see us through another good while so we don't have to buy new furniture. But it's meant that I've turned my craft room into more of a workshop-looking space and less of a living space. I would still like to someday get a comfy armchair for it. But uh, I've moved all sewing stuff in there. Like I have a sewing table now. It's, it's a hundred plus year old table that 
my great grandmother had, and my mother had, and now I have it. So it's super, it's beautiful, and it's it's a really cool thing. It's a solid oak, um, gorgeous table. It's round. You could put a third um, piece in it to make it oval, but I have it round, and I just sew on it. I don't do any cutting or anything on it, but um, it's really cute in, in the room behind me. And then I have an old dining room table. We don't really have a dining room anymore, and I don't know why I'm going off on this, um, but it's just been on my mind, I guess. Um, we don't have a dining room. We never used it, and I don't want a formal dining room. Um, we eat either on the porch in the summer if we're entertaining or um, in the kitchen, in our kitchen, at our kitchen table. And uh, so there's been, we have now our piano in the dining room as well as craft stuff, and it sort of joins the living area, which is now gigantic library slash music slash craft room. So very exciting stuff, and I don't know what the point of that whole thing was, but look. <laughs> Here is a stitch marker from Sucre Sucre Miniatures, and yes, it is a hostess cupcake with a bite taken out of it. Uh -huh. Favorite treat from my childhood, and it's on this square here. I believe this is a No Makers mini. Uh, Captain America, perhaps? Yes, going back to the hostess cupcake. Back when they used to make it with lard when I was a kid. And they were delicious, made with lard, um, before they used partially hydrogenated nonsense. They're nasty now. Um, God, I was, it, was, it was just make my day if my mother put one of those in my lunchbox. Oh, my goodness. And I realized at some point that eating Hostess cupcakes, for me, is not a spectator sport. Okay? You probably have your own way of eating them. But I would like take the icing off and like have a little bit of the cake and the cream and the frosting and then that hard fr white frosting on the top. Anyway, I need to eat them if I still ate them. I would need to eat them alone with no one watching because, oh my gosh, delicious. And I need to savor every last chocolatey bit. So when I saw this, it was a Proustian moment and... It was my Madeleine, and I had to have it, so I ordered that. I think it came right before I went to Spain. This is gorgeous. That's new. And I think that's it. So this has turned out to be not really a summer project for me. Again, I'm, I'm knitting the ends in as I go. These, these just are ends waiting to be knitted in when I knit the, the adjacent square. Excuse me. Try to uh, sneeze daintily so I don't blow your eardrums out. Okay, um, that's it for works in progress. And stash dash wise, with everything I've done, knitting, spinning, weaving, puts me at 6,494 meters. So I have reached my goal. I'm not going to try to hit 10,000. If I do, that'd be great. If I don't, I'm cool with that too. Um, my goal was 5,000 meters, so yay me. All right, spinning. I have so I've been doing a little spindle spinning. Um, this is Hog Island wool that I got from Beth Smith um, when I took a class with her at History Unwound. One of the presidential breeds, and I've talked about Hog Island before. Um, I carded this a little bit. You can see it's sort of been carded, like these are little flats stuck together. And because uh, it was just, I wanted to get some of the chaff and the straw out of it. Hog Island, the Hog Island fleece that I had, that thing was filthy. <laughs> they, it was a fleece from Mount Vernon, George Washington's home. And yeah, it was, it was living its sheepy life very happily. So I have the Hog Island on my Gosh, I never remember the name of the maker of the spindle, but this is a Takli, and it's my fastest spindle. It's also my most, le most lethal. I usually have corks on it when I move around. So I'm spinning it very thick and thin, nubs and slubs, and it's just the nature of the Hog Island, but it'll look great 
and it's super, super duper springy. Let me see if I can find a really sturdy spot. Show you the bounce. So I really enjoy spinning it, and um, it's very, a very little bit here. I have one little cop I need to add to this. So I think it's going to be three plied, and we'll see how it turns out. Now I have finished spinning my Cotswold Coopworth Lamb's Fleece. This is a swatch. I have to knit up. Just, yeah, I just tried random stuff, shaping and whatnot. Um, so I got a swatch that looks like a little baby dress. Um, how many skeins do I have? Oh, I should have written down. Oh, I do have it written down on my phone, the final yardage. So this is a three-ply. Um, it's prepped. It was prepped worsted, so I combed it. And it was spun woolen, so I guess it's a semi-woolen. So, um, I think it's at almost 1,300 yards. Oh, plus this. I'm not going to dye it. It's a beautiful ivory color. It's not so fuzz on top of it. It's a beautiful ivory three-ply, and I think it'll be a cardigan. So it'll just sit in this basket and look pretty until I know what I want to make. I haven't taken um, reps per inch measurements. Um, I don't remember the gauge of that swatch. So it will just depend on if I want, a, how I want the fabric to be, if I want it to be airy. We shall see. Um, so yeah, that's my tour to fleecing this year. Um, I haven't spun a whole bunch uh, since I finished that. And trying to think was there anything else no that's it for spinning um, although having gone through my stash and culled quite a bit of it um, I had to move my hand spun to a bigger shelf and so I'm slowly but steadily reducing my fiber to be spun stash and it's going into my already spun so I still have quite a bit of fiber to be spun I have pound of Rambouillet, a pound of Cormo from Reflections at Rocklands, and I have a Lincoln Fleece, and I have um, yogurt. Yogurt's next to be processed and spun, and he, uh, yogurt is um, a Romney Border Lester Coriadale Cross, and then I have my Rambouillet Coriadale Chocolatey Brown Fleece. That might be, hopefully, I'm waiting to hear when I can give this person my money and get the fleece. Another Romney or Romney cross. <coughs> Gray fleece this time. So I need to get cracking again on my fleecing and my spinning. But I've been doing other stuff and that's okay. So let me tell you about my weaving plans. Oh, crud bucket. Okay, my weaving plans will be told to you next time because I forgot to bring the yarn out. Uh, I have a plan to, I have a giant skein of, I think merino, superwash merino. And it's like 750 yards from Feederbrook Farm and it was part of a de-stash from my friend Angie. Angie has, I, I think she just grows yarn, like she thinks about yarn. And it goes into her stash because she's always saying, okay, I'm de-stashing, here's stuff for you. And it's a Rubbermaid tote. And I think, okay, she must have really cleaned out her stash. And then a year later, <laughs> a similarly sized Rubbermaid tote comes my way. And I've, I've kept some, I've given some away, um, I've de-stashed some. Anyway, so I want to weave this particular skein on my triangle loom with a continuous thread method. And then I have some wool, a wool silk blend from Manos. And I found that I really enjoy weaving wool silk blends. They're just, they come out stunning after they're finished. Um, the hand is gorgeous. And so I wish I had it to show you, but I'll bring it out next time. So that's it for weaving. I have no new weaving to show you. You know what I, for okay, I can't believe I forgot to show you my Pebble Beach. 
Hang on a sec. This is right here in my show notes for my FOs. When you don't podcast regularly, you get bad at it. Oh, look at the color changing. Yes. This is my Pebble Beach. This is knit out of some hand spun from um, un the Unwind Yarn Company. I love how the Pico bind off was done here in this turquoise against the, or this really, it's more like an aqua. Here's the right side, the aqua against the dark. Oh, so gorgeous. This was the, this is Polworth in the Aurora Borealis colorway. Um, 600 yards. Oh, do I have my little nugget of leftovers? I think I do. This was like a very light fingering, and I modified the pattern <clears throat> because it just wasn't going to be big enough if I didn't, um, based on my yarn size. I did not use the yarn size that the pattern recommended. This is what I had left. So, gorgeousness, am I right? So this is the Pebble Beach by Helen Stewart. And I'm dying out here in it now. Although it is pretty light. It's pretty lightweight. It's a lovely, lovely shawl. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Very fun to knit. I love how that end kind of curls like that. The Pico Bind Off, if this is the first time I've done one. I know, how have I gotten this far without doing a Pico Bind Off? Very cute. It did take, you know, a good amount of yarn and a, a bit of time, but it was worth it. Very much worth it. So, highly recommend the pattern. Highly recommend Dana of Unwinds. Yarn, look at that. It just it slays me, the dark parts and the aquas here. So, very cute. Very, very pretty. All right, sewing. I have sewing to show you guys. Let me take a drink. I've been into sewing. I have taken all of my scraps, well, the serviceable fabric scraps, <laughs> and I did a jelly roll quilt out of my own scraps, and it is not, certainly not, you know, as professionally done or straight as it would have been had I used, you know, machine cut fabric scraps. I cut these all myself. Two and a half inches. Oh, excuse me, I got something in my eye. I think my son's home. <laughs> I can hear young boys screaming. My husband's in there. I am not going in. Um, my Deathly Hallows fabric. Yeah, so all of my favorite fabrics, just look, there's the gas fleece right here, um, in one blanket. And I have yet to bind this. I've quilted it by stitching in the ditch. If you haven't done a jelly roll race quilt, the top, making the top of this took me I, like an hour and a half, not counting the cutting. So it's the second one I've made, and... It's full of mistakes, but you probably know by now that I'm fine with that. Um, so I had the quilt bedding already. Um, the only thing I didn't have was the backing fabric. So I made a fabric.com purchase, and awesome is that. This is a K facet, Mille Fiori pattern with the Venetian glass in the pastel colorway. I love it. I think I'm going to do a black binding. I really enjoy a black binding on a quilt. and I think it'll look fabulous with, with that um, backing fabric. My daughter's dress was out of this. Um, I made a shirt out of this. What else? Ooh, there's my dandelion. I made a purse out of that. So, really fun stuff. If you look on YouTube, you'll find all sorts of jelly roll racing tutorials, basically. The other thing I sewed was what I'm wearing. And this took me a day to make, just because I had, I you know, I had to, it's the Anna dress. 
from um, By Hand London. And I'm going to move my computer back a little bit. Uh, I saw this on the Fluffy Fibers podcast with Isabel and pretty much copied. <laughs> I shamelessly took inspiration from Isabel and basically made the same dress she did, although hers might have been a v-neck. My next one's going to be a v-neck. So the Anna dress, still got threads on it. Oh, look, some sparkly threads. Sorry, I want to make sure no seven-year-old boys come out here. The Anna dress is super comfy, and it's got threads and wool all over it now, but I love it. Now you got a big view of my chest. Um, very, very, very cute. Not hard to make at all. I put in an invisible zipper, and I need a better zipper if I'm going to be putting things, putting zippers and things, because this one's terrible. I got it at Joann's. It was the only brand of invisible zipper they had, and it just does not go up and down well. But, um, but I think it looks pretty good in the back. I don't think I can. You can see the the bit of the zipper part. A little bit of back cleavage there. Sorry. Anyway, um, it's hard to tell, but I did post a picture on Instagram, <laughs> and it's a funny picture. Um, but I'm super thrilled, super thrilled with this. It's it's comfy. It has these kimono sleeves, which are incredibly comfortable to wear and easy to make. And I have shamelessly copied another fabric choice of Isabelle's. I'm going to make one out of the, the blue Mille Fiori. How pretty that is. Um, cave facet for Rowan. And I got this from fabric.com. I'm going to make the same dress, but with a v-neck in this fabric. And I'm kind of loving it. I also have this fabric. Um, that I got 30% off, and this is going to be a skirt. And this is a rayon chalice. I think I got this on sale for, uh, at fabric.com. Um, I love this kind of fabric, and this will become, it's, oh, it's a knit. And is it a knit? No. I think it's woven. I can't tell. It might be a knit. It's pretty stretchy. It must be a knit. When it's this microscopic machine knits, it's super hard to tell sometimes. Um, I'll have to look that up before I actually... No, look at that. There's a warp and a weft. I don't know if you can see. Nope, it's woven. But I think the rayon gives it a stretch. This will be another dress for the fall. So yeah, I'm kind of loving it. And I'm thinking, I'm going to sew my nightgowns in the winter. And... Anyway, I continue to find Fluffy Fibers podcast incredibly inspiring for the handmade wardrobe aspect. If you guys know of any other good sewing podcasts, let me know. I know that Truly Myrtle is someone, she's in New Zealand. I've had her on my list for ages. Um, I just watched the first episode and she sews quite a bit as well. So I am watching her. Now, I got something that has really helped me in terms of pattern making and that is Swedish Swedish pattern paper or tracing paper I'm not sure what it's called this is the Anna dress which is print is sent to, as, a, as a PDF and printed out and it's a lot of pages now with the sailor top and the washi dress I printed these out and I taped them together to make a pattern which is then su super huge and hard to store Minerva Turkey, um, Minerva Turkey Knits, had a really um, great technique for not having to do that. So she prints them out, and I've totally taken this technique, and it's brilliant. Um, she pins these to her blocking boards, okay, and then um, traces the pattern out of that, and when the pattern pieces are traced, you just take these off the blocking board, and you can store them with a clip. So it's the difference between this and a gigantic folded up or rolled mess of a pattern. So here, here's the Swedish tracing paper. And this can be sewn. Um, here's part of the bodice. Um, you can see those are the double pleats down here. The lines where you do the double pleats. And <clears throat> instead of, again, gigantic pieces that you have to store. 
this rolls up super easily and does not um, doesn't really rip. It doesn't crease. So you can fold it or roll it and it's just a little bit. So all I need to do to store my patterns is have like this much stuff. So brilliant and appreciated advice. I have people in the yard now. Okay. Um, all right, it's time for acquisitions and then I'm gonna say goodbye. Hi, Sparky. <laughs> Podcasting. My dad. Okay. So you might remember that one of my Chow Gu interchangeable cords uh, broke. And I did not get a response from them. It had been it had been over two months, so I I emailed them back. I replied with the auto reply that I had gotten that verified that I had emailed them originally and they said, oh, we're so sorry. Your email must have gotten deleted. We never, we don't have a record of it. So we are so sorry. Usually we have you send in the defective product and we send you a new product. But we're not going to ask you to send it in because you've waited so long. So Hopefully I will be getting a new replacement cord um, for my interchangeables very soon. Um, just wanted to give you an update there. Um, let's see. I showed you all my fabric. <laughs> One other acquisition I have is from Pigeon Reef Studios. I have been on her website entirely too much. I love the way she dyes fiber. And this is... The Bridges colorway. It's 60 20 20 merino yak silk. It's pricey, but I've been wanting this type of fabric for a while. It's a one of a kind. It's called the Luminosity Project, and it's more expensive because she she layers on dye like nobody's business. So you get this super. It's luminous, right? And I'm kind of in love. It smells like a big animal. <sighs> I think it must be the yak in here. It makes it smell like that. So yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Now the other acquisitions are from a lovely viewer. Four kitties have I. Mel Melanie? Okay, now I, I feel like... Uh, hang on. Melanie, goodness, I got it right. Good. She sent a card along with a bunch of stuff for prizes. Thank you so much, Melanie. And a couple things for me. I'm not sure when these will be used as prizes, but look at that. Space Cadet, it's a sparkly Lucina base in the plunge colorway. Sock Bunny yarns, how cool is that? The Sugar DK base, Superwash Merino. Very, very cool, Mexicali. It's almost like Germany colorways. Uh, Germany colors. Diabolical, all stuff I've never had before. In the Azalea colorway. Beautiful pink, sparkly. <clears throat> One of the Regia Floromania colors. This is Neon Ocean. And Fiber Nymph. This is the Sunflower colorway on her Sunshine base, which is uh, Merino Superwash Fingering. Isn't that beautiful? This would actually be great for my design project. Just saying. Now she also sent an adorable, I think this is a spindle bag. It's super padded. The bottom is super padded, squishy squish, with an attached notions pouch. How cute is that? So adorable. Super cool. Owls. My daughter loves it. She's very into owls. Sheepish. A book that I have on Kindle that I have read by Catherine Friend. Two women, 50 sheep, and enough wool to save the planet. That will be a prize. Now she sent this packet of um, hand creams by Happy Hands. Happyhandstore.com. Just a whole variety of different scents. I may have used one already. I gave one to my friend Leanne. And... These are awesome. You guys, you should put one in, buy these and put one in your each project bag. 
Really cool idea. And then, minis for me. All right, um, Lydia Knits, Ugly Duckling. Awesome speckled stuff. I think my, my son's friend stayed over. Um, he was at his house and now I think they've come here. I trust that my husband is on top of these things. He's in there. BB Cakes. Hmm. Never heard of that. Very cool. Ooh, Sun Valley. Sun Valley Fibers. Ooh, this is from the Zombie Knit Apocalypse 2013. Very cool. This is gorgeous. Then there's <clears throat> Lost City Knits. I have not tried their stuff either. Anzula Squishy. I've heard a lot about this yarn. Very nice. Ooh, people, it's Miss Babs, BFF. That's a gorgeous colorway. The next time Fiberspace has Miss Babs trunk show, I'm so going to the Fiber the Space Commander party that gets the, to pick it all over before everyone else. Jilly, Dream in Color. It's a fingering weight single. Uh, 716 Knits, If the Apocalypse Comes, Beep Me great name. And this one I was super excited about. This is Mustache. Is that an Anna and Elsa colorway? It might be. I know she did one. Mustache Yarns. Super excited to try that. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope my the sound on this episode has been okay. Um, Trying to be more conscious of not fading in and out of, of with my volume. So next Friday, not the day after tomorrow, but a week from t from Friday, I go to Oregon uh, with my daughter. So whether I record next week or not just depends on how things go, preparation for the trip. Um, lady I'm going to stay with is super crafty. Super crafty for some strange reason. You know what? I say she's super crafty and she is, but she is an artist too. She sells her paintings. Um, she blogged for a long time. Um, Pink and Green Mama. That's her name. And now she is an artist selling her work. Like she's selling it. So, um, just realized I might have to redo this seam. <laughs> it's really good to see myself. Look, this one has the same top stitching and it's barely visible. This one, the tension was weird on the machine. Anyway, never mind. Um, anyway, I cannot wait to stay with her. Here's the thing she wants to knit one of those gigantic wall hangings with like baseball bat sized knitting needles. Has anyone ever done that? Do you have tips? <laughs> she wants to put it on her, on a wall somewhere, I think. Or just have it and just do it for fun. Like, you actually have to have two people do the knitting. One hold the working needle and the yarn, and the other one hold the other, the other needle with the stitches to be knit. If you've done that, let me know. Give me tips, because I'm pretty sure we're going to try it. So, until the next time, you all take care. Bye-bye.